I'm not ready to give up on it yet. And I'm really happy that I didn't. I got a glitch. Oh, Hello my now. loves and welcome back. It's Ash, your truth bombing fairy godmother for everything love, dating, and relationships. It's been a few weeks since my last video so I wanted to go ahead and pop on here and just check in with you all and give you an update on my life and how I'm going because things have progressed a bit since my last video. So in my last upload I had explained that I was back living at my ex and I's home together due to a very severe decline in my mental health. I truly hit the darkest, lowest, scariest moment I have ever had during my 29 years on this earth. And that is a moment I hope I never, ever, ever return to again. Overall, I am doing a lot better and I feel a lot more stable. Does that mean that I'm out of the woods yet? No, I still feel quite fragile and as incredible as my ex and his support has been, I know that this is a very, very temporary solution, which still leaves me in a place of feeling really unsettled and ungrounded and that I don't really belong anywhere or have any type of home base, both in the literal sense of not having a physical home, uh, an actual, yeah, house that is mine and an, and an atmosphere and environment that I feel I truly belong in, but also that sense of belonging in regards to relationships and connection as well, which leads me to the biggest and best update of all, which is that I finally got my travel exemption approved to go back to the US and be with my family. So after two very long years and two weeks time, I will be on a plane heading back to the US for three months at this stage. And to say that that is something that is needed for me right now is a huge, huge understatement. I really don't know what I would have done if the Australian government had declined me again. And honestly, I don't even wanna go there in my head because that's a really scary thought. So in regards to that home base and that real sense of belonging, I feel that I don't have right now. I know that those are things I do have back in the US. Uh, my brother and my cousin are both at a wedding right now for one of my best high school friends and they FaceTimed me from the reception earlier today and my cousin got really emotional just telling me how excited he was for me to come back and how wrapped up and love I'm going to be when I arrive. And that's something that I really, really need right now from people who really know me and all the details of everything that's gone on the past few months and who truly understand the depths of my heartbreak and my pain. And through that support, I hope that I can bring a lot of healing to not only the past few months, but pain that has existed within me long before that. In fact, being back in therapy and really immersing myself in all different types of different somatic healing practices as well has allowed all kinds of things to come up for me. And one of those is a lot of unresolved pain and trauma regarding my very strict religious upbringing, which is something I have touched on a bit here on this channel, but not something I don't think I've explored in too much detail. And it's been really interesting and fascinating to uncover this really deep longing and yearning to be much more spiritually connected to myself and the world and others and things bigger than all of those things, but that that is something that I have majorly repressed and rejected due to my trauma and negative experiences. And allowing myself the permission to explore more formal religious or spiritual practices and beliefs and find out what feels good to me or what resonates with me despite my skepticism or my cynicism has been incredibly liberating. I will always have 
a skeptical, cynical nature about me as a result of my upbringing. But I am so tired of living my life from that place. It keeps me small. It keeps me disconnected. It keeps me separate from the person I really want to be and the life I really want to live. It's just, it, it's straight up not fun. I don't want my pain and my trauma to continue to harden me. I want to take my skepticism and cynicism by the hand and know that that part of me was constructed to protect me and keep me safe from harm and violation, but that I don't want to live my life or make choices from that part of me anymore either. So I'm not going to. I'm going to try shit out and I'm going to allow myself to do that without judgment or at least with as little judgment as possible. As devastating as the past few months and even the past few weeks have been, it's like that devastation has crumbled and softened me in a way that has hopefully allowed me to rebuild. Interestingly, through being let down and betrayed and abandoned by people I trusted more than anything and allowing myself to just feel and lean in to the most overwhelming grief and pain and heartbreak. It's like right there next to all that pain was a well of the deepest, most profound love that I didn't even know existed within me. Huge life questions I've had for years, things like motherhood, for example, have never been more clear. I have never been more sure and confident of my capacity to love so fiercely and so unconditionally and how honored I would be to hopefully share that love with a child or children. I can't wait to be a mom, which is ironic because I've never been so far away from that actually becoming a reality, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Grief and love truly are two sides of the same door. And I think in order to really harness and tap into the love, you have to completely surrender into the grief. And fuck me, it's hard, but it's part of life and life can be profoundly painful. It can be such a bitch, but it can also be so, so beautiful. And I'm not ready to give up on it yet. And I'm really happy that I didn't. And it makes me really sad to think about the fact that I almost did. And although I'm still really struggling and sad and lonely and scared and heartbroken, I see a potential and a possibility for so much more beyond that. I hope I'm never ever back at that place of giving up on life again or even in the days that followed that moment, which were honestly almost just as bad and just as difficult. But I think I'm better for it. I think I truly needed to break. I think I needed to hit that rock bottom in order to really heal from the inside out and to rebuild. And I'm not saying that that's the case for everyone, so please don't misconstrue that. But for me, I think it will and, and is playing a really integral role in my healing and I can't wait to share more with you guys as that progresses and during my time back home for better or for worse because I am definitely under no illusion that things are going to be all sunshine and rainbows when I'm back there. So I'll go ahead and wrap things up there. There's a lot more that I can talk about in terms of 
various revelations and things that have come up for me over the past couple of weeks, which perhaps I can explore more in another video. But for now, I just wanted to let you all know where things were at and that I'm doing okay. And as always, thank you so, so, so much for your love and support and encouragement. It really has gotten me through the past couple of weeks. So thank you, thank you so very much. I will hopefully be back very soon. As I said in my last video, no guarantees or promises, but I miss you guys so much when I'm not on here. So my intention is to be back as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I will see you very soon. Tell me what was in that stuff you gave me. I think I like it. In fact, it made me high.